Welcome everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live program. As you know, we do this series of uh, Memories of His Holiness Bhaktitya Maharaj every week. And we usually invite one of uh, Bhaktitya Maharaj's disciples to share memories during this time. This uh, program is, comes to you from our Institute House in Gidanagari. And um, we have our team also that's with us every week. And so we have Kishir Rani and Anna and Leela and Bakyat that's in Turkey. And so she's probably not on with us tonight. So we want to just jump right into the program because Nava has so much that he wants to share with us about his Holiness Bhaktivedanta Swami. We want to welcome Nava Kishir Das. He is um, a, an amazing servant of just in general, Srila Prabhupada, Iskon, Bhaktivedanta Maharaj. He's been serving for over 15 years, and um, he lives in Milwaukee with his newly born son, just beautiful, beautiful little boy, and his wife, who serves as an anesthesiologist nurse in it, it, where they live in Milwaukee. And, and Nava has this amazing profession that I remember about the theater marriage when he found out that this was his job, financial analyst. He was like, yes. We need him to be engaged in service. And so Nava, please share with us some of the memories that you have from serving back to Tia Tamaraj. We're really so happy to have you on with us tonight. Thank you, Mother Rajali. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the uh, Inner IFAS team for putting uh, these meetings on, uh, specifically Kishore Rani, Leela, and Anna. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, when I start off and think about uh, my specific memories of Bhakti Tirta Swami, my, my spiritual teacher and mentor and guide, uh, I think about, uh, as I was thinking about different times and circumstances, uh, some of the things that came up were, there was a theme around uh, garlands, uh, uh, specifically around kirtan and lecture. Uh, so mm. I'd like to talk about different uh, memories I have uh, specifically related to that. Uh, I'll start with uh, uh, with Garland. Uh, it was uh, during the uh, during the time of the uh, the Gita Nagri uh, temple opening that uh, I had a, a specific memory that uh, I actually sent uh, to the uh, this one second. It's not coming up. I apologize. Um, uh, I had actually uh, sent uh, in uh, to uh, for one of the uh, the, the memory books uh, where uh, Bhakti Teatro Marge. Uh, my friends uh, Ketu and Rasika Nandadas. Uh, Rasika Nanda Prabhu was a disciple of Radhanath Swami, and we drove together from Washington D.C. Uh, to, to Gita Nagari to attend uh, the temple opening. And uh, the temple had a beautiful water fountain that you can hear the water trickling down into a pool as you enter, and a wooden banister stair that leads up to the temple room. Uh, the altar has an ornate wood carving door. And the presiding deity Shishi Radha Damodar stand gracefully on their white marble altar. Uh, Maharaj had commented that the builders was concerned that the deities may look too small in the new temple room, but he, as well as everyone else, was pleased that the size of the room did not take away from their view. Uh, he had flown all the way uh, from Europe, is what I have in my notes, uh, to make sure he could be there for the temple opening. He, he led the devotees in Kirtan around the corridor that encircles the altar in a Congo line uh, with, a mild, with a wireless mic uh, when he led Kirtan. And after the kirtan or the, uh, the congregational uh, chanting and singing of the Lord, uh, we had a, a ritualistic bathing ceremony or abhishek, uh, Radha Damodar. And different devotees were leading the chanting. Uh, he personally performed the abhishek of Shishi Radha Damodar along with several other pujaris. He was dressed in a saffron lungi and top cloth and no undershirt. Uh, it was different seeing him in Pujari attire. Uh, when Jayadev Das, a disciple, uh, also of Bhakti Chaita Swami, was chanting, uh, Nittai Goranga, Nittai Goranga, uh, 
in Kirtan, I, I saw Bhakti Jitter Maharaj, he was uh, doing the function of uh, the bathing, but he was looking at the Kirtan and he was smiling uh, really big. And he was kind of dancing to the beat by bouncing on one leg uh, while he was smiling uh, a lot at Jayadev Prabhu. And he was very pleased. Uh, Bhakti Jitter Maharaj, he asked devotees to pass the mic around and share their own reflections. Uh, different devotees shared and it created a very nice mood for discussion. We were all sitting down on the new hardwood floor of the temple, uh, except for Maharaj, who was standing facilitating, facilitating the discussion. Uh, he asked devotees to share which deities were their favorite in ISKCON. And during one part of the reflections, Rasikananda Prabhu uh, shared how his family used to live at Gita Nagri and how he had a happy time uh, growing up there as a child. Uh, he slipped in that it was his birthday today, as well as as well, at which everyone exclaimed, Haribo, and clapped their hands. Uh, Maharaj chuckled, and as Rasikananda Prabhu continued to describe his favorite deities, uh, he grabbed his danda, and if you know the Gita Nagri temple room, uh, there's a, a light fixture uh, to the right of Prabhupada's Vyasasan. And so he took his danda, and he, was, um, he had kept his garland there. And so he was trying to uh, reach it, uh, and the light fixture was about 12 feet uh, high in the air. And so he had put it up there. And then uh, when he had heard that it was Rasikananda Prabhu's birthday, uh, it was a beautiful garland of roses that he had been given uh, for the festival. And he kept it for someone special. And after two or three times jumping in the air, he was able to knock it down. And he ran behind Rasikananda and garlanded him uh, while he was speaking. And Rasikananda Prabhu was quite uh, pleased and surprised. And Maharaj was uh, very particular about uh, who would receive his garlands after a lecture. Uh, oftentimes when he wanted to show his appreciation to someone special, uh, he would reserve his garland carefully for such a person. Uh, I know because I would often eye garlands carefully uh, when other sannyasis gave lectures and Maharaj's garland was really hard to get. Uh, in the Vaishnava culture, we, uh, this um, wearing of a garland is significant because uh, when you give somebody uh, a garland of flowers, it's considered a sign of respect. And especially when a spiritual senior person uh, wears that and they give it to uh, a junior uh, member of the temple community, it's considered that they're giving their blessings. And so these things that we share are both acts of appreciation and love uh, within the Vaishnava community. And so uh, particularly when uh, spiritual senior people uh, come to give class or to uh, share their company uh, with the spiritual community. That's one of the um, gifts of love, uh, so to speak, that spiritual personalities will, will share with the community. So uh, Rasika Nanda Prabhu had gotten his garland and he, uh, he concluded the program by discussing his own reflections on his favorite deities. Uh, it was a strange feeling. He was talking to us very conversationally, which you don't experience much uh, when in his presence. Uh, he described how he preferred marble deities, and I think he said his favorite deities were uh, Radha Shama Shundar in Vrindavan. Uh, he said what particularly attracted him about Gita Nagar was the dedication of the devotees he met uh, when he was asked to manage the farm, and that he sensed the presence of higher entities when he walked on the dirt road uh, leading up to the temple in the, for in the forest. Uh, he encouraged devotees to walk on that road uh, because uh, he was confident that others would also experience that same tranquility and peace and that uh, access to um, your higher self uh, by, by walking on that road. Uh, so that, that was one memory I had uh, of a garland uh, that he, he had given. Uh, another that I had talked with other devotees uh, and I remember uh, two particular instances. I remember during one of the uh, the Beggar Four lectures, he uh, there was a, a small child who I, who I think may still be part of the Gitanagi community, but I haven't seen her recently. Uh, but she was in a wheelchair and she had glasses on, and uh, Maharaj had this really nice uh, rose garland, and uh, it was in one of the lectures where we were uh, right outside of the house and. It was summertime, and uh, uh, he had kept the lecture on, the garland on for the whole lecture. And right after the lecture was done, that, that girl had approached him in the wheelchair, and then he gave his garland uh, to that girl. And 
uh, I, I just remember that uh, if you look uh, for other uh, renounced monks in our temple community, uh, such as Radhanath Swami, if you watch him give class, uh, as soon as somebody gives him a garland, he'll instantly take it off and he'll, he'll put it to the side. And so it's just interesting when I noticed with Bhakti Chaitanya Swami that he would be uh, very conscientious to give that garland and uh, as a almost like a reward or a treat uh, to someone as who uh, to, to show his appreciation for that person. Uh, with uh, Jadarani, she had mentioned uh, one time that uh, she had come late for a program and she was assigned to cook macaroni and cheese uh, for the for the deities as well as for the community and uh, but she was still determined to get that service done that offering done for the program and so she had done that uh, and very quickly and the the offering went well and and the uh, the meal was was turned out great. And so Maharaj was very pleased. And so he gave him uh, his garland uh, at that time. And she actually kept that in a, in a frame. And she had it uh, for many years uh, afterwards. And uh, the one and probably the only instance I can remember him uh, giving me a garland was uh, when I had asked for uh, initiation. Uh, at that time, it was at Mudvan Kunti's house in 2004. And the initiation is a, a rite of passage in the Vaishnava spiritual community where we seek formal guidance from a spiritual teacher. And it has uh, strong significance in uh, the Vaishnava community where uh, we formally take vows and uh, we also express our intent to live our lives according to spiritual principles. And so uh, I remember at that time I had read in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita about the description of Sanatana Goswami and how he had approached uh, his spiritual teacher. And he had uh, mentioned that uh, people call me as a very learned man, uh, but I do not know the difference between my body and my soul. Uh, and he uh, had gone on in great humility to, uh, in supplication to his spiritual teacher, asking for spiritual guidance. And so I had uh, recited those prayers uh, to Bhakti Tirta Swami, and uh, it was just me and him uh, in the room at that time. And uh, he, said that he was very excited uh, that I would be part of his uh, spiritual team. And uh, he had uh, ex uh, accepted me as a disciple at that time. And uh, after that darshan, he had uh, given me his garland. And uh, that's probably the only time I remember uh, getting that garland. So it, uh, it definitely was interesting because uh, required a lot of, um, I mean, I guess if you think about it, I was giving my, my life and the, um, so I had to give my life over to get the garland. But, um, uh, I, you know, I, I do want to say that um, I think my spiritual journey has kind of had lots of twists and turns, but uh, this uh, spiritual foundation, the spiritual community that I've been given uh, by my upbringing in the Washington DC area, as well as in the IFAS DC community has been something that uh, I always know that's a part of me and that I can uh, access when things get difficult or I don't understand why something's happening in my life. Uh, I feel that it gives me great solace uh, and also it gives me great solace to uh, know someone like Bhakti Chaita Swami who had this strong faith in God and in Krishna and who could uh, helped me understand uh, the importance of faith uh, at uh, a very young period in my life. Um, so uh, that's uh, what I wanted to say about garlands. A couple other things uh, in terms of, of kirtan. Uh, there were a few specific memories. I remember that uh, in kirtan, 
uh, I always uh, like to, uh, as part of singing and dancing and the singing and dancing is a core part of the Hare Krishna uh, tradition uh, where we celebrate uh, the names of God. And I remember um, particular instances when I first met him, uh, it was, I want to say it's February of 1998. And there was a newspaper article that I had seen in a temple room. I think it was called Love Not Lust. And, and I found that Washington Post article, but I, I've, I've misplaced it, but I, I know it's somewhere online. But uh, where Bhakti Chitta Swami was talking about how the love between a man and a woman is actually a three-way partnership uh, where both the husband and wife uh, or the, the man and the woman uh, understand that God is part of that relationship. And I was a little surprised when he used that analogy of, of like a three-way um, partnership or like a triangle. And I just thought that was a really interesting way to, to describe uh, that uh, relationship. And uh, I had you know, mentioned to my friend, like, I think my first impression was, this is kind of weird. Like, I don't know how to process this. And, and, uh, and so, you know, over the years, he had talked about different subjects. He had talked about uh, aliens. He had talked about uh, other planets and uh, differently about how some of the principles in Vedic scriptures, how it deals with talking about some of these things that are kind of extraterrestrial or spiritual uh, or uh, things that you don't normally encounter. And so uh, I always had a, a sense of hesitation in terms of getting closer because I didn't know uh, if in order to follow his teachings and his, his guidance, if I needed to also like, wholeheartedly believe in these things that I wasn't sure about. Uh, but uh, some of the things that stuck out to me uh, during the times that I heard his classes uh, and his kirtans was his uh, deep reading of Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is his spiritual teacher, uh, who is also the founder of ISKCON. And he had really grasped the teachings of Krishna consciousness and of uh, Vaishnava spirituality to a level where he was able to uh, explain a principle in a, a really novel way. If you listen to the introduction of Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, it talks about how uh, if I remember correctly, the understanding of Radha and Krishna and how, uh, how the Supreme Personality of Godhead has the perfect synthesis of the, the masculine and feminine energies. And so if you listen to his lecture about unconditional love, he talks about how in relationships, how uh, we're looking for uh, that complementary aspect of ourselves uh, through another person. And that when we become more spiritually whole, uh, we develop this sense of finding more of our uh, feminine and in some cases masculine self by associating with the Supreme Lord. And by that association, uh, we can actually fulfill uh, the deep desire of love that we're seeking in our hearts. And uh, I, I found that and also his explanation of the ego and, and false ego in particular, and how he applied some of those teachings in his personal life to thinking about his personal interactions uh, with others uh, to be uh, really mind opening in terms of how he not only read the scripture, but he really thought about how he could apply it and how he could present it in novel ways that people could understand. Uh, so getting back to, to Kirtan, I, I think, uh, I had always been somebody who uh, really enjoyed that aspect of Krishna consciousness, that, that celebration of singing and chanting. And I remember in 1998, uh, I was 17 years old at that time. And it was, uh, he had come for the Janmashtami's festival, which is a celebration of the birth of Lord Krishna uh, at our temple. And 
uh, he was there for the whole day. And then the day after uh, was a celebration of uh, the founder of Ish ISKCON, uh, Srila Prabhupada, his uh, birthday or appearance day. And so he had uh, led that program and uh, my uh, dear friend Gorvani Prabhu, he uh, was leading the kirtan. And uh, there were particular tunes that I remember. Uh, so uh, at that festival, uh, the, the Gorvani Prabhu had been leading this tune. Um, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And um, if you're familiar with um, these Hare Krishna chants, you'll, you'll recognize that tune. Uh, but uh, when Bhakti Tirtha Swami, he had this uh, African drum. It was like a, a timpani drum that was handheld. And so as Gorvani uh, would, would chant that, uh, he would uh, beat his drum and he, and he would go and he'd do a beat like Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare and so he had been uh, leading this kirtan and I was 17 at the time and I, I was very uh, energetic and uh, I had said in my mind that I'm going to keep up with him. I'm going to try to um, like whatever dancing he does, I'm going to try to follow that. And, that, and it was a, uh, it was a fast day, uh, a noon fast day. And so the day before was also a fast day. And so most of the devotees were, were pretty tired. Uh, so, uh, and I don't think I had drink in, drinking any water either. And so I just remembered, uh, looking at him, and then at one point uh, he just um, uh, just started exclaiming at the top of his lungs, and then moving his knees and dancing. And at that part, at that point, when I saw him, I just said, "It's <laughs> you, you, and like uh, you know, uh, I, I really can't keep up with you." And uh, it was just something amazing to see his his level of energy. And uh, I think uh, there's. Other, you know, aspects that I remember, uh, and uh, I, I think I, I really appreciate. Uh, I think the last thing I didn't comment on was just uh, my experiences in class, and that uh, in classroom sessions, he would encourage me to to ask questions. And there was one time that I was hesitating to ask questions, and he said, uh, "You know, Dr. Neil, if you if you have a question, just just ask it." Like you know, he want he really. Um, encourage that and so I think you know most of my my memories were uh, either in connection with with Garland's Kirtan or uh, specific classes and um, a, a couple of specific darshans also uh, but uh, I do want to appreciate uh, Mother Rajalila and, and the team for uh, encouraging me to do this I, I don't think I've shared my memories in this format before and uh, I was surprised uh, I actually wrote a, a list down of um, all the different times that uh, I had interacted with Bhakti Tirtha Swami. And uh, I was surprised that there was about uh, 20 different instances uh, when I, I didn't really think I had many memories uh, when Mother Brajalila asked me. And it was just uh, refreshing to think about the past, uh, to think about those uh, memories that uh, you shared with somebody of uh, spiritual uh, significance and um, caliber and also somebody who uh, was of great esteem, uh, both in my individual life, but also in, uh, in our community. So I'll, I'll end there, uh, a couple minutes over, uh, but if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, thank you so much, Nava. This is so beautiful. I, I, you know, I just remember you when you came that you was a young man, not that you're an old man now, but now you have a wife and you have a child. And, you know, I know so many things have changed. You've moved from D.C. to Minneapolis and, you know, just a whole lifestyle change. And I was wondering, from all the experiences you had with Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, how have those experiences impacted your life? for it to be the way that it is now? What are some things that you've learned from him in terms of being a father, being a husband, 
um, being a, the spiritual leader in your household? How does, how does that all work? Yeah, I think, I think the conviction that he had uh, was something that, that gives me solace. Uh, you know, to have faith in God is, is a, uh, I think for the common person, you know, like myself, we don't see God in, in, um, you know, I've talked to different disciples and, and some disciples have very mystical experiences in terms of, and even when talking with Dr. Chitta Swami, uh, you definitely got the sense that he was uh, having uh, deep experiences uh, with divinity. And as an outsider or somebody who couldn't exactly fathom what he was uh, experiencing or going through, uh, you knew that in interacting with him, he was someone who was very intelligent uh, he uh, was very sensitive in terms of appreciating how people felt. And he was very concerned also about uh, the uh, state of the world. And so it was a combination of a deep spiritual practice uh, and an extraordinary capability to communicate uh, that consciousness to others and this concern for other people in the world that I think has given me uh, a really strong example of how to interact uh, with others in my community. Uh, that, that was something that Bhakti Chaitra Swami, uh, that Agni Dev Prabhu, when he would, uh, as his uh, personal secretary, um, one of the uh, tasks of a disciple sometimes is to uh, massage the spiritual teacher, uh, where you offer massage to uh, the male disciples would do this to help uh, the teacher relax. And in that time, Bhakti Chitta Swami would use that time to ask about different members of the community and ask how they were doing. And he would ask, uh, how is this, you know, um, disciple or this member of the community, um, member of the community doing? How's this person doing? And then if uh, the if Agni Dev Prabhu didn't know, he would say, well, has anybody called him? And uh, I think, you know, that consciousness of, uh, especially at this time where we're experiencing this, you know, this COVID uh, situation where we're all quarantined due, due to the pandemic, I think, uh, you know, these types of spiritual examples help you uh, kind of reach beyond our own um, level of, of living, you know, where any time where we can, think more about the broader community, about our extended family, and about our friends. I think it just underscores uh, this, this spiritual principle that Bhakti Tirta Swami uh, really emphasizes, that the point of uh, not only caring for yourself, but uh, really being concerned and, uh, I would say, enthusiastic and also uh, determined to, to keep contact with others. Hey, Bo. Hey, Bo. Thank you. Thank you. Bo? Any of the team, other team members want to jump in with questions for Nava? Um, thank you so much for sharing that. That was so sweet. Um, I, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to thank you um, because every time when we're hearing of Bhakti Tirja Swami, it just comes, he comes through as, as such a um, the relationship that people are, that are sharing the memories that it, it just like comes through so powerfully and over and over this I this um, the way he related to people and has taught his his students to relate to people you see that in every single one of the disciples of his that that I've met at least and then this conviction also um, that he had is, is so strong. You can see that it was passed down directly from teacher to student. And I was appreciating your story about the garlands um, because your second story, you talked about how when you were very young and you first met him, you had these doubts and you're like, I'm not sure, do I have to take all of this? But then going back to that moment where you're sitting in that room with him and, and he's accepting you, um, it was so sweet. And then I guess the only question I, I have, and I'm not being facetious, but I'm just wondering, like, 
now I the the worth it right because you said you traded your whole life for that garland and I'm like <laughs> I bet that was worth it so I think that's probably the only question I would have is like do you agree that now it's it was worth it <laughs> yeah you know I, I think it um uh I, I think Bhakti Chitra Swami was someone who was very uh as uh, Mother Rajulia knows, and as uh, disciples who interact with him uh, know, he's very conscientious about his time. And uh, I remember that I, I think any time that, uh, that each one of us, you know, offers something to God and to Krishna and to the spiritual teacher, I think, um, you know, that's, I, I think what gave me a lot of comfort is that even services that I didn't know that Bhakti Jaitar Maharaj um, noticed that I was doing, I think Mother Rajalila mentioned that um, in some of the interactions between uh, the two of them, um, he had appreciated and recognized it. And um, so I, I guess to answer your question, I, I think it was a, a really uh, good feeling that, um, you know, after that uh, effort of wanting to get his appreciation and his, um, that I was able to, uh, to get that in that circumstance. And, and I think, uh, in terms of uh, now, I, I think Jayadev Prabhu went in our WhatsApp group, he had posted a, a portion of a lecture of how that uh, interaction is still available uh, by, uh, by making a conscientious effort that you know, every day in our prayers to, to God and to the spiritual teacher, uh, we can, uh, we just, can talk, just talk, talk to them and, and tell them day, how our day is going, what we're going, what we're going through. And, and, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I think as Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj, how he was able to give this energy, it was fueled by his own internal connection uh, of receiving that energy. And so, you know, what you talk about in terms of whether it's worth it, I think it's, it's something that uh, as spiritual practitioners, we, we have to strive for every day. You know, like we, um, and definitely keeping in touch with, uh, the different disciples of Bhakti Chaitanya Swami and hearing how they're doing that is, is inspiring and and, um, and and knowing that that uh, we're all connected together uh, in a, in a, uh, in a very unique way that uh, many of us you know spent um, years you know the, the people who I interacted with I, I spent basically my childhood and my young adulthood you know growing up with them. And so uh, we kind of have this bond and I think that bond will always be uh, a part of us. And so um, I guess a long answer, but, but uh, I, I think you know, that, that feeling of worthiness and w whether it's worth it, I think it's something that we kind of continue to have to strive for. And that um, you know, as the years go by, we, we don't have the physical presence of a spiritual teacher and sometimes of our own, um, uh, spiritual community always to enthuse us, but you know, keeping in contact like this and Mother Bridge Lila reaching out to me, I think it it kind of got me to organize myself and to think about deeper about my spiritual commitment and it's definitely something I appreciate. Um, uh, uh, Anna, you, Anna have you have. I also just wanted to thank you for for sharing this story with us. It kind of, when I think about, I, I never met Bhakti Dirka Swami Maharaj and for, so I only know him based on the concepts, based on the thoughts that he put in, he, in these books, in these teachings. So I kind of like have this overall idea, you know, like philosophical almost kind of uh, view. And when you share stories like with the Giryan, it's kind of like uh, with the Girliant, when you share those stories, it's kind of like uh, he's becoming more, to me, he's like his image is becoming more personal rather than like just philosophical. And when you were sharing that story, I was like rooting for you to get the Girliant. <laughs> You're saying how, how, uh, <laughs> how Bhakti Tirka Swami was so precise to who he was going to give it. And since you're sharing the story, I'm like, oh, I hope he gets it, <laughs> I hope he gets it. <laughs> And then at the end, you were saying that you did get it. And it was like, it's something that will stick with me and something that will add to his image in my mind. So I'm very grateful. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there was, um, and I brought some things that, that he had um, given to me. There was a, uh, a book, uh, Spiritual Warrior 3, and uh, this, it was a program at Mariah Gupta's house, and I had asked him, how do you know, you know, who your spiritual teacher is? At that time, I was, um, I was associating with the Iskan Temple community, and uh, there was many spiritual teachers as part of our organization. And uh, I think he had said different things, but um, in one lecture, he had talked about how there was a heart connection. And uh, uh, in this particular circumstance, uh, I think he had just mentioned, you know, continuing to, to practice uh, Krishna consciousness. And uh, my friend Ketu was there, and, and he had uh, signed the book uh, like this. It's, I don't know if you can see this. Um, but it says, um, my dear son, Hare Krishna, um, yours in Krishna consciousness, B.T. Swami. And uh, um, I thought that was, that was really interesting that um, even at that time he had, um, was encouraging me to, um, he was offering kind of his, his spiritual guidance uh, and his um, kindness in that way. And uh, another time when I, I wasn't as involved it's a few years later, but um, I didn't get the exact same uh, direct um, signature, but uh, this one was more simpler, but he said, for Neil, uh, B.T. Swami. Um, so I, I thought maybe it was, it was reciprocal with uh, the amount of surrender. Uh, but uh, uh, one thing that I did sh want to share, just a couple of things, that uh, when Malati, um, when I first written a letter to him, he had mentioned how uh, I had done it like a management status report and I had talked about what are the things I had done that last month and what are the things I plan to do in the next month. And I, uh, it was, I think my first and only email to him as a disciple, uh, before he passed away, uh, because I was initiated in 2005, uh, right before he passed away. And, uh, he had said in his response that he was very pleased with how I was utilizing, uh, time. And one of the things that, uh, mother, Kunti had given to me uh, many years later was a uh, pocket watch that uh, that he had, and um, this one is, it has a really intricate um, uh, design on the front. It's like a, a farmer and a, a worker, and um, in the inside of it, when you open it, um, it says "excellent" um, on the inside, and uh, I was just thinking how. Uh, when, I, when I received it, how he would utilize his time. And uh, it's something that uh, I think about a lot, that how, how can I use my time better uh, in, in service to others. And um, his, his disciple, Malati, uh, who I've asked if, if she could also come on to speak, and she, she's interested. So may, maybe yes. in a future session, uh, you can yes. get her. Uh, yes. But uh, she, she gave me this handkerchief of uh, Bhakti Swami, and, and he said that uh, he cried in it a lot. And so, um, so I, I'm sure it has some, um, some spiritual blessings there. And then the last thing uh, she gave me was that um, uh, when he passed away, it's, it's normal um, for a great spiritual person, they also do this ritualistic bathing of the body. And so uh, the water from that bathing ceremony she had given to me, and she, and she uh, gave it to me in this uh, bottle. But um, I guess those are things that, you know, that I, I've, I have and have collected. Uh, but, um, you know, as I think about it more in terms of, you know, memories and, and their significance, it's, it's really wonderful um, seeing all, all of you who have, you know, maintained that commitment to Krishna consciousness and uh, the, you know, more so than the things that the spiritual master or the spiritual teacher gives to us is the um, the real reason why uh, you know he spent his life was to try to influence people and, and uh, definitely seeing uh, you all who are committed to you know uh, living a spiritual life is probably uh, the uh, you know the greatest thing and the thing that he really wanted was uh, that the way to honor someone was to establish a community that was based on the principles that that person stood for. Uh, and that's exactly what you're doing. And, um, you know, that we, we all can have uh, different things, but, you know, unless we, we kind of 
uh, trying to be example to you know what he preached and what he taught. I, th I think we, we we fall short unless we do that. And so I want to thank you all for for doing that. And I know I've talked uh, longer, but I appreciate your time and your patience. Uh, thank you, Nava. Kisharani, do you want to share any last minute thing? Anything last minute before I request Nava to please bring his family to say good night to us? Would you be willing to do that, Nava? Bring your wife and your and your son. Sure. This Thanks. is your expansion in terms of service to the guru. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right. And, and, and I just would like to think, uh, say thank you. I agree with everyone that it's uh, it's priceless to hear stories from Bhakti Tiriha Maharaj's disciples. And it's really touching. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for organizing. I think, you know, there's, there's many uh, disciples who have different memories and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, just uh, reflecting on the past and reflecting on, you know, these memories are uh, good for me to, to remember, you know, those. Um, yeah, I, I think we all forget about the past sometimes and uh, especially, you know, having these spiritually meaningful experiences and reflecting on that was helpful. So I really appreciate uh, the encouragement to do so. Thank you. So can Carrie come? Is she... Is the yeah. baby still awake? Yeah, <laughs> Maybe she can. Oh, she's coming right now. He's getting his pajamas on. Oh, he's getting his pajamas on. Okay. Well, this is so sorry, well, I know. Uh, Ruban would be so happy to see you and your family. He, you know, of course, he loved before this beautiful marriage and this beautiful child. So we're just welcoming. Thank you. And Carrie, would you like to say anything before we close out? Would you like to share no, with us? No, this was just a beautiful, um, beautiful meeting with all of you guys. So, I really Thank enjoyed it. Thank you so much for taking care of Nava. Oh, of course, of course, absolutely. I love him. Yeah. He's, a he's, he's one of our treasures and we love Aww. him deeply. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't wait to meet you in, in, in person. And wh where do you all live? Uh, the team, uh, they live in New York. All the team members live in New York. Okay. Well, uh, my thoughts and prayers are with you. I hope uh, you oh, all are. Lila is in New Jersey. Lila lives in New Jersey. And Anna lives in New York. Sorry. Okay. So, yeah. I hope yeah, you guys are, are staying safe and staying sane. Thank you so I'm much. I'm sorry, can I add a few questions? It's Bahit from Kazakhstan. Just ah, to Bahit. To... Oh my gosh, you got it on just... from Kazakhstan. Oh, wow. <laughs> ah, yeah, thank, you. thank you very much for sharing your memories. I just wanted to say that Pasitir uh, Kaswami plays, uh, he's continuing to play his role all over the world. All over the world. We know him, we read his books, so I um, just wanted to say my best regards from, I don't know, from, from the country, which is very, very far from you, and uh, to send my best, best wishes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Who was who that? Her name is Bakit. Bakit, and she is actually one of our, um, actually the whole team is uh, international from different countries. And she is in Kazakhstan. She normally lives in Turkey. Oh, wow. Oh, so, wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. So that's why we that's why we kind of say inter IFAS, it's an international team that's just trying to bring the teachings of Bhaktatir Tamaraj and keep his legacy alive. That's wonderful. That we owe to Kishir Rani, who pushes like anything to keep Bhaktatir Tamaraj's legacy alive. So we thank her so very much. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Nava. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Yes. Right. Can you say Avi. the baby's name, please? Avi. 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 He looks happy. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Thank you all. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna.